Hey guys, Susanna here. Um, I thought I would come here and show you my latest design that I gave you a sneak peek of uh, a little while ago. My sparrow, sparrow on a spool. Um, this is going to be the tutorial, but I'll also show you some of the kits and all that kind of stuff as well. So in the kit, I have got 16... Um, I'll show you. On this side, it's got the the um, pattern, and I'll pull it out so it's not so glary. It has got this beautiful uh, piece of French lace. It was full. That's all I've got left. So made in French, and it's vintage and all that kind of stuff. It's really pretty. So that goes the width of that. I've got this really nice piece of vintage. Um, tablecloth it's got really lovely texture on it this is for in the corner then we got this is all the stuff for the um, the sparrow that's for the the spool and the sparrow body and all that kind of stuff and this beautiful fabric here I'll just put that back on there um, is I bought this uh, from a vintage place in on eBay, um, printed in England, uh, Chile and Ma, and it said it was a vintage piece of fabric. It was a, quite a big piece of fabric, um, and it's got, I've got 16 packs with um, roses in it, like the pink roses, um, either like this sort or there's a couple. So I've got 16 of that and then you got a 11, is it 11 and a half by 8 inch square of this beautiful um, fabric that's got either that on the pattern or this pattern. I'm going to be working on, I'll show you the pattern in a minute. So I've got 16 in that colourway. These are still pink but um, it's got the chrysanthemum, what do you call it? It's uh, still pinks. Uh, I've got 14, I think, in that one. So they'll be listed individually on, on that one. And so with this, you cut that off and then you get this little bit here, which will go, you can use that for this corner bit. So, yeah. So there's, there's some that are like, they seem a bit longer in bits and pieces, so that because you really do need a place to put your little sparrow. So it's got all the same, the, the same la, um, vintage lace, laces, more than one. And then I have got 10 packs with this um, blue. It actually have, I had four like in the yellow colour, that like this colour. Um, but yeah, so it sort of had all different little spots where it had all these flowers so it's got this is the blue um, and it's you get quite a big bit in that but you need to cut off some of that to be putting in the corner and I'll show you in a minute so uh, that will be listed on Etsy with um, you know there's 10 of these packs everything else is the same just the flowers are different so I had plenty of the beautiful fabric but not all in the same colors so even though that is still pink same colors as that but these are just different flowers that's more roses and that's uh, the chrysanthemum or whatever you, however you call them so it's still plenty available so yeah I think six, 16 in the roses 14 in the other one 10 in that one so there is 40 packs all up I had 60 squares that I cut up um, and I've got, because I had to take out this one, I've got 19 left and then also bits and pieces that I'm going to use for the sewing case. Um, but I've got plans for them. I, um, I've got that galah that I'm working on and I showed my niece, she goes, oh that would make a really good kit. So I'd probably have to um, work on that and show you the kit. I think I've already showed that's that one so I'd have to hand dye all that kind of stuff and um, yeah make up a kit doing these is so beautiful 
Okay, now. So, what we're doing with this, I can't just put these, I've just gotten bits and pieces left over. So, um, those little bits that you see, you know, the tiny little square for that's yellow, and I've already cut them all out, and I'm going to put them on there. So, put that there like that. Cool. That's the beard. So, what I do need to do... I need, do need to iron that on there like that, but I need to place this down. Now, if you want to, it has got this beautiful fabric on the top, I mean, on the, on the other side, and you can utilise that. But personally, I don't know. I'll have a look, see what I think. I think it's a tad busy. It would be fairly busy. I don't know. Now that I'm looking at it, it's not so bad. Um, I'm going to have that in the corner there. Uh, even though that fits nice, I actually just quite like that. Which I'm going to have in the corner. So, just going to cut that off. Actually. some of that as well so that's how I'm going to have that because I really like um, and it doesn't make it a sick either I love this fabric so that's going to have because uh, I'm just using there's lots of bits and pieces that are left um, oh, that's the big sleep I'll put that underneath there like that this one goes in the middle I had some, there's all like just foliage and all that kind of stuff. So, admittedly, I do have the bit, um, benefit of having extra bits and pieces. And then that's going to go in there like that. And I need to leave room. For this little guy. Don't mind it. I was going to put that here. I do think it's probably a tad busy. I do like that though. Maybe I can probably put that there to sort of cover some of that up. That might work a little better. So I'm just yeah. Sometimes you've got to stand up. So or we are going to do it this way, which is why now we could probably try that side. Then you've got this underneath, which actually doesn't look too bad. I think maybe that way might work. And we've got this and the leaves and everything work on that way I think I might do it that way and then it's got the wibble yeah or we got that side where it's quite plain but I think I think I'm going to go that way because I like that you can see that underneath I'm going to cut that off just there I like a bit of some of the It just styles it down a little bit. Okay, so I'm having that there, and I don't want to completely put it down there. I've got the one that's got um, some of that wiry edging stuff on there which I don't mind because that I'm going to be doing the edge anyway actually don't mind that probably put it off to the side I wanted to do some words here that's why I wanted to keep that a little bit blank but I really do love that um, that 
looks at the thing. Now this is going to go here just to fill in that space. Now when you get your pieces they're fairly square so if you trim it off to like you know do a square in the corner and then make it you know lock it so it doesn't look so square. Um, I may even put that along there. Probably tuck that in there. Or not have that at all. Maybe in the corner. I don't know. But I do love these little leaves. I think they're beautiful. Maybe I can just have them falling. Like scattered. Like they're falling. Hmm. Don't mind that. That looks pretty good. Um, see, so when, so when you get your packs... You'll have bits with those little bits in there, and um, I think I'd like to have them like they're falling. Maybe even put another leaf there since I've got it, and not use that. Okay, oh, I just love the, the leaves, I think they're just so beautiful. Now, so what I want to do... Um, I'm going to just get a little bit of this and actually I don't know what I might do. Yeah. Got some fabric. I've got some fabric glue. Which is probably a better thing. I just want it to hold it down, that's all. Let it come in down there like that. can add later because today I might do show you in the tutorial so just put that down it, it will dry clear I'm hoping um, but it's all going to be covered anyway so that'll go down there and I'll sew that down there later I could probably might uh, this glue here has been really playing up. I would like to have a bit of a just to have it sitting down so I know it's not going anywhere. But it's just sort of all over the place, if you know what I mean. Move that over onto there. Now, got the spools. This is why you need your bits and pieces. Oh, don't lose them. So I've got the spool. No, nope. definitely that way. There we go. So I'm going to take that off and I'd use iron on um, Liza Fix. Okay, just need to measure to see how far this comes out so that I'm fine there. So I don't want a little bit off to the side. Okay. I'm just iron that down. So I might, oop, because it is um, felt, it's probably sticking a little bit. 
I do need to have it. Um, maybe if, if I do it through here. There we go. Different fabrics play out for different things. to use this as a guide so it's going to go that way and it sits a little bit above because we need the feet once again I don't feel like I've got to melt the glue underneath better grab that because that needs to go underneath it so that's the that's the tail So that should stick down quite okay because it's fabric on fabric but sometimes um, felt can be a bit tricky but the good part about felt it doesn't um, it, it doesn't fray now this little guy is, is I it's actually quite tricky. It's going to be quite tricky to get it into the right spot. Because I've been fiddling around with it. Um, the beak. That's a little mark. That mark there. And this one. Is the crest. so small it's starting to fray a little bit so I thought I'd better trim that up okay now we are needing the beard to sort of be on a bit of a tilt but close to the edge you got that guide of the pillar the thing okay well it may end up being over I think it is, I think it's a bit long, so I'm going to just trim that bit off so I know that it's going to go like that. Okay, then we've got that bit there which is going to go make sure it sort of goes over the top of that okay then this bit tucks in just underneath there and it needs to be all probably pushed down further down on a bit of an angle Oop. it's a bit fiddly and I'm sorry about that guys and then sometimes when you move one thing the other thing moves and oh it's just delightful now this part here goes like that and that's going to sit right there okay that does seem a little weird at this point but I think I think we've got it and then the wing I think that, yeah, 
goes there and that sits I might even have it sitting underneath there okay I've got it it's, it's the with the beak that I'm really worried about I don't want that moving it's going to sit underneath I think there we go Ugh, sorry what I might do is hold that down I think yep. it was down too low there like that and that is too low oh my goodness because I can see the top this is what I mean it's going to be tricky there we go go like that on that bit of an angle sitting there might have to trim that bit off I think there we go I think that's working then I'll trim this little bit off sometimes you just gotta make it work by the time we stitch it all down It'll be beautiful. Now, this is going to sit there like that. There we go. That wasn't hard burnt at all, was it? <laughs> oh, she says we're tongue in cheek. Yeah, it has to be on that bit of an angle. I don't know if you can see. This is what I'm going with. Um, it needs to be on a bit of an angle, and it does feel weird that it's not sitting on this, but. We have to put the legs in a little bit later. Okay, and all your little bits and put them in the bin. And then I'm going to proceed to um, do stitching. Okay. Make sure that that's sitting down. I think it is here. Turn that off. Let's see what we're up to. 23 minutes. Okay. So you've got a bit of an idea of how to position your pieces. So oh, I want to sort of have it like it's falling. I might what I might do is I'm just going to keep the sleeves. I would like to have that up coming out through there like that because I like the leaves that are going there and we want to I might have it going a little lower there we go so that's there's that then have this piece here it's too actually that looks nice covered over that I like it because I need to I need to make sure that I leave a piece for the string just to hang down and then I like that little piece there so actually I might do I'm gonna continue this along here and I might make a branch like stitch a stem stitch of a branch and just have a um, yeah I like that idea and then I'm gonna put in with words his eyes on the sparrow so that is <sighs> where we're up to how cute is that he does look a little funny at the moment but he won't and then I'm going to use a 
and that's not in the kit because I haven't got enough. I'm just going to use one of these balls, probably. Hmm. I like. I like this one. This one. This one. Or this one. One of the yellowy, yellowy thing, which I think that's going to be his feet. And then I'm going to also use um, some of that thread for. Now I wanted to have either a. Um, I feel a little screaming. This colour, this colour. Now. I want the thread on there to look like it's a worm. It's going to be its feet. I think that might work. Or I was actually thinking maybe using a grey of some sort. Grey brown. Something like that. And. Okay. Let's look. Here we go. Such gorgeous colours. I love it. So if you had the blue, if you had the blue pack, you could probably use a, br a blue. So I'm on his feet. I think his feet do need to be this. Oh, they're fairly light in the picture that I've gotten it off. I think I might try that. And then go, ooh, that one, that one, or that one. Hmm, oh, I like that. That's nice looks nice on the pink and brings out some of this colour but then I'm thinking that might look more like a wormy colour and goes rather nice with that so that's either those two so we've picked our colours now what I'm going to do is put these aside You sort of know what we're going to do with that, and then maybe I might start um, working on this. So, let's have my cup of tea. I definitely want to stitch on this as well, and do a bit of slow stitching around too. Um, okay, now pink. Soft pink. I might use this. Okay. And also, I've got a little. Where is it? I'm just going to draw it in. It goes like this. Um, And then in the middle, it's got a bit of a hole. And the same with this, I need, I need a little bit of the edge, so I, I know where the spore sort of comes in. There we go. Now. So I want to make it so that you don't see it too much, rather than that you do see it. And because it doesn't um, fray, all I'm going to do, let's start here, anywhere I'll do, is a bit of a running stitch. Just enough to hold it down. I'll probably do a backing stitch, but I thought a running stitch would work just as good um, to hold it down. That's all it really needs by the time we get the thread on here. I might just do a running stitch here and here and then a backing stitch around everywhere else because it's going to have 
the thread on there. So limit, limit your work where you can. So this isn't going to be a quick tutorial. It's going to be a bit of a, a bit of a work in progress, but absolutely gorgeous. And this will make a lovely wall hanging, I was thinking, or if you wanted to make it as a journal cover, you're more than welcome, but or even a block for in a quilt, whatever you want, but I'm probably going to be hanging it on the wall. And I think it would look rather cute. Now, from here on, I might do a backing stitch, which is it's basically the same as running stitch, except for you fill the gaps, if you know what I mean. You don't leave open gaps. Okay. Felt is awesome to work with. It's so forgiving. And um, I had I needed to have something in my stash that I had a lot of and that I was originally going to make a brown um, spool but um, I wanted just a bit of diff something that's a little bit different and um, it doesn't fray and I had quite a bit of this and it went so well so it's a bit pink spool it is if you don't like it when you make yours you can probably get yourself some brown or whatever colour you want a grey one would probably be nice but I just I thought a pink one would be really nice make it a bit shabby chic Oop. so there you go I'll whoop continue on with this in the background and then I'm also what you do with this is we want to um, if some people like to do blanket stitch but I actually like to do a backing stitch so get all the fabrics and do backing stitch on here with all of them just to make sure it's being held down if you don't want to do backing stitch even just little stitches going out like make it as as um, you know rustic or what, do it it's whichever way you want it so basically homework is stitch it down so um, and then we're going to come back in and I'll show you how to do, to do the eye and we do need to do a little bit of stitching along here like a little bit of backing stitch so when we come back I'll show you how to do the, the wall so you do need to get yourself some wool I think that's probably going to be the go because it matches that and also I want to come back and do some stitching on here like maybe some um, satin stitch and all that kind of stuff that's why I made this plain because the wings have actually got brown you know because we want it look, to look like a sparrow so um, you know um, and we need to do a few lines and all that kind of stuff on here as well so Okay guys, well I'll um, continue on with this, so I'm just going to do backing stitch here to stop there and then you can do running stitch, you can do backing stitch all the way around but it just will make it quicker because um, you're only get, that's going to be covered, you won't see it because it will be all covered with, um, with that going all the way down so and I'll show you a way that you can save it and you don't have to have it all the way going all the way around to so use the minimum amount of wool you possibly can okay no worries guys well thank you very much um go on etsy and check out the the kits and maybe you can um make this gorgeous little wall hanging along with me i think he's absolutely so cute just love it love little birds okay guys yeah i'll show you what i mean by running stitch once you get to their backing stitch you need to do also a backing stitch here 
and here just to give it a bit, a bit of definition of the roundness and then here draw yourself um, that if you want to um, I'm going to do it in brown or a darker like I've got a blacky brown really and I'll probably do that because it needs to look like it's a hole so it needs to be in a darker color okay guys I'll catch you in the next video thanks for watching bye